We know from the last video that if we have a high calcium ion concentration inside of the muscle cell, then that those calcium ions will bond to the troponin proteins, which will then change their shape in such a way that the tropomyosin will moved, be moved out of the way. And so then the myosin heads can crawl along the actin filaments, and then we'll actually have muscle contraction. So high calcium concentration, or calcium ion concentration, we have contraction. Low calcium ion concentration, these troponin proteins go to their standard conformation, and they pull, or you can say they move the tropomyosin back in the way of the myosin heads, and we have no contraction. So this is contraction, contraction, muscle contraction, and then low calcium concentration, we could say relaxation. So the next obvious question is, how does the muscle regulate whether we have high calcium concentration and contraction or low calcium concentration and relaxation? Or even a better question is, how does the nervous system do it? How does the nervous system tell the muscle to contract, to make its calcium concentration high and contract, or to make it low again and relax? And to understand that, let's, let's do a little bit of review of what we learned on the videos on neurons. Let me draw the terminal junction of a of an axon right here. Instead of having a synapse with a dendrite of another neuron, it's going to have a synapse with an actual muscle cell. So this is its synapse with the actual muscle cell right here. I could do it just like that. And you'll see what this is in a second. So this is a synapse with an actual muscle cell. So let me label everything just so you don't get confused. This is the axon. We could call it the terminal end of an axon. Terminal axon. This is the synapse. Synapse. In, I realize I'm going off the screen. Synapse. Just a little terminology from the neuron videos. The space was a synaptic cleft. This is the presynaptic neuron. This is, I guess you could kind of view it the postsynaptic cell. It's not a neuron in this case. And then. So we have this is our membrane. This is the plasma. This is membrane. Membrane of muscle cell. And I'm going to do probably the next video or maybe a video after that. I'll actually show you the anatomy of muscle cell. This in this video will be a little abstract because we really want to understand how the calcium ion concentration is regulated. Membrane of muscle cell, and this is called a sarcolemma. 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 I think it's sarcolemma, however you want to say it. So this is the membrane of the muscle cell. And this right here, you can imagine it's just a fold into the membrane of the muscle cell. If I were to look at the surface of the muscle cell, then it would look like a little bit of a hole or an indentation that goes into the cell. But here we did a cross section, so you can imagine it folding in. But it's 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 like if you put a if you if you poked it in with a with a needle or something, this is what you would get. You would get a fold in the membrane. And this right here is called a T tubule. T tubule. Let's get to get our good to get our terminology out of the way. And the T just stands for transverse. It's going transverse to the surface of the membrane. And over here, and this is the really important thing in this video, or the really important organelle in this video, you have this organelle inside of the muscle cell called the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is the sarcoplasmic sarcoplasmic reticulum. And it actually is very similar to an endoplasmic reticulum in kind of its in and in, in, in somewhat of, of what it is or maybe in how it's related to an endoplasmic reticulum. But here its main fo function is storage. Well, an endoplasmic reticulum, it's involved in protein uh, development and you know it has ribosomes attached to it. But this is a this is purely a storage, a storage organelle. And what the sarcoplasmic reticulum does is it has calcium ion pumps on its membrane. It has calcium ion pumps on its membrane. And what these do is they, they're, they're ATP aces, which means that they use ATP to, to fuel the pump. So you have ATP come in, the ATP attaches to it, and maybe a calcium ion will attach to it. I'll do the calcium ion in pink. Maybe a calcium ion will attach to it. And when the ATP hydrolyzes into into ADP into ADP 
plus A phosphate group. That changes the conformation of this protein, and it pumps the calcium ion in. So the calcium ions get pumped in. So the net effect of all of these calcium ion pumps on the membrane of the, cal of the sarcoplasmic reticulum is in a resting muscle, we'll have a very high concentration of calcium ions on the inside. A very high concentration of calcium ions on the inside. Now, I think you could probably guess where this is going. When the muscle needs to contract, these calcium ions get dumped out into the cytoplasm of the cell, and then they're able to bond to the troponin. Then they're able to bond to the troponin right here and do everything we talked about in the last video. So what we, what we care about is just how does it know when to dump its calcium ions into the rest of the cell. This is the inside of the cell. Inside the muscle cell. Inside the, inside the cell. And so this area, is what the, uh, this area is what the actin filaments and the myosin heads and all of the rest, and the troponin and the tropomyosin, they're all exposed to the environment that is over here. So you, know, you can imagine. I can just draw it here just to make it clear. You know, we have our actin filament. Right there. I'm drawing it very abstract. We'll see more of the structure in a future video. Maybe you have your myosin head right there. And then you have your tropomyosin that's wrapped around. And it's being nailed down by troponin, by the troponin proteins, just like that. This is a very abstract drawing, but I think this will give you a sense of what's going on. So let's say this neuron, and we'll call this a motor neuron. Motor. Motor neuron, it's signaling for a muscle contraction. So first of all, we know how signals travel across neurons, especially across axons, with an action potential. We could have a sodium channel right here. It gets its voltage gated, so you have a little bit of a positive voltage there. That tells this voltage gated sodium channel to open up. So it opens up. It allows even more of the sodium to flow in. That makes it a little bit more positive here. So then that triggers the next voltage-gated channel to, op to open up. And then that, so it keeps traveling down the membrane of the axon. And eventually, when you get a, a, enough of a positive threshold, voltage-gated calcium channels open up. And this is all a review, so the calcium ions. This is all a review of what we learned in the neuron videos. So eventually, when it gets positive enough close to these calcium ion channels, they allow the calcium ions to flow in. And the calcium ions flow in. And they bond to those special proteins on near the synaptic membrane, or the presynaptic membrane right there. These are calcium ions. They bond to proteins that were docking vesicles. That were docking, and remember, vesicles were just these membrane, these membranes, or these little, yeah, these membranes around, around neurotransmitters. So they are all containing neurotransmitters. When the calcium binds to those proteins, it allows it allows exocytosis to occur. It allows these the the membrane of the vesicles to merge with the membrane of the actual neuron, and the contents get dumped out. This is all review from the neuron videos. You, I explained it in much more detail in those videos, but you have all of these neurotransmitters get dumped out, and we were talking about the synapse between a neuron and a muscle cell. The neurotransmitter here is acetylcholine. Acetyl acetylcholine. But just like what would happen at a dendrite, the acetylcholine binds to receptors on the sarcolemma, or the membrane of the muscle cell. And that opens sodium channels on the muscle cell. So the muscle cell also has a voltage gradient across its membrane, just like a neuron does. And then that allows, so when this guy gets some acetylcholine, it allows sodium. It allows sodium to flow inside the muscle cell. So you have a plus there. And that causes an action potential in the muscle cell. So then you have a little bit of a positive charge. If it gets a, a high enough to a threshold level, it'll trigger this voltage-gated channel right here, which will allow more sodium to flow in. Then if it becomes, and so it'll become a little bit positive over here. And of course, it also has potassium to reverse. It's just like what's going on in a neuron. So eventually, this action potential, you have a sodium uh, channel over here, it gets a little bit positive. When it gets enough positive, then it opens up and allows even more sodium to flow in. So you have this action potential. And then that action potential, so you have a sodium channel over here, it goes down this T-tubule. 
It goes down this T tubule. So the information from the neuron, you could imagine the action potential, then turns into a, a, a kind of a chemical signal, which triggers another action potential that goes down the T tubule. And this is the interesting part. And actually, this is an area of open research right now. And I, I'll give you some leads if you want to if you want to read more about this research. Is that you have a protein complex that essentially bridges the sarcoplasmic reticulum to the T tubule. And I'll just draw it as a big, as a big box right here. So you have this protein complex right there. And I'll actually show it to you know, people believe, I'll say out sort some words out here. It involves the proteins triadin, junctin, junctin, calsequestrin, calsequestrin, and ryanodine. Ryan ryanodine. That they're somehow involved in a protein complex here that bridges between the T tubule and the sarcoplasmic reticulum. But the big picture is what happens is when this action potential travels down here, so when we get positive enough right around here, this 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 complex of proteins triggers the release of calcium. And they think that the, the ryanodine is actually what is the part that actually releases the calcium. But we could just say that it Maybe it's triggered right here. When this, when the action potential travels down, let me switch another color. I'm using this purple too much. When the action potential gets far enough, I use red right here. When the action potential gets far enough, so this environment gets a little positive with all those sodium ions flowing in, this mystery box, and you can do a web searches for these proteins. People are still trying to understand exactly how this mystery box works. It triggers an opening for all of these calciums calcium ions to escape the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So then all of these calcium ions get dumped into the sarco into the outside of the sarcoplasmic reticulum into just the inside of the cell, into the cytoplasm of the cell. Now, when that happens, what, what are you going to happen? Well, high calcium concentration, the calcium ions bond to the troponin, just like what we said at the beginning of the video. The calcium ions bound to the, bond to the troponin, move the tropomyosin out of the way, and then the myosin using ATP, like we learned two videos ago, can start crawling up the actin. It, and at the same time, as once the signal, once a signal disappears, this thing shuts down, and then these calcium ion pumps will reduce the calcium ion concentration again, and then our and then our contraction will stop, and the muscle will get relaxed again. So the whole big thing here is that we have this container of calcium ions that, when the muscle is relaxed, is is essentially taking the calcium ions out of the inside of the cell, so the muscle is relaxed, so that you can't have your myosin climb up the actin. But then when it gets the signal, it dumps it back in, and then we actually have a muscle contraction because the tropomyosin gets moved out of the way by the troponin. So I don't know, that's pretty fascinating. It's actually even fascinating that this is still not completely well understood. You maybe, you know, this is an active, if you want to become a, uh, a biological research, this could be an interesting thing to try to understand. And you know, one, it's interesting just from a, a scientific point of view of how this actually functions. But there's actually, uh, there's maybe potential diseases that are, are byproducts of malfunctioning proteins right here. Maybe these you can somehow make these things perform better or worse, or who knows? So there actually are. Uh, uh, positive impacts that you could have if you actually figured out what exactly is going on here when the action potential shows up to open up this calcium channel. So now we have the big picture. We know how a motor neuron can stimulate a contraction of a cell by allowing the sarcoplasmic reticulum to dump all of its all of its cal or or to dump uh, or to allow calcium ions to travel across this membrane into the cytoplasm of the cell. And I was doing a little bit of reading before this video. And these pumps are very efficient. So once the signal goes away and this door is closed right here, this can this sarcoplasmic reticulum can get back the ion concentration in about 30 milliseconds. So that's why we're so good at stopping contractions. Why I can you know I can punch and then pull back my arm and then have it relax all within in split seconds because we can stop the contraction in in 30 milliseconds, which is you know very it's it's, it's less than a thirtieth of a second. So uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next video where we'll study the actual anatomy of a muscle cell in a little bit more detail.